Hello, my name is Tim Shoebridge. The subject of this video is MIDI monitoring. Uh, basically, what I want to do in this video is show you some of the tools that I've ended up developing in order to develop the products that I've been developing, if that makes sense. Um, you know, it's a bit like uh, uh, an electrical engineer building a circuit. He's going to need a multimeter and an oscilloscope and, and other things to be able to help figure out what's going on with that circuit. And in terms of what I've been doing with MIDI controllers, software MIDI controllers, I've needed tools to help me see what's going on, see what MIDI messages I'm receiving from my keyboard, see what MIDI messages I'm generating and sending to my synthesizer, those kinds of things. So I've written quite a number of little utilities, little tools over the last few months. Um, I'm gonna show you just two of those tools, which I've decided you might be interested in. Maybe they'll be useful to you, who knows? So I'm gonna showcase them in this video. I'm gonna make them available as a little bundle so you can just buy both of them together. Uh, maybe they'll be useful to you, I don't know. Let's just find out, I'll just show you what I've been doing. So here is the first one. It's called the MIDI Message Monitor. <laughs> Tongue twister, or MMM, not M&M, MMM for short. Um, there are plenty of uh, tools out there that you can download for your computer, and quite a few of them are free, that you can download to your computer that will give you a log of MIDI messages. Um, what I needed was something that ran inside Voltage Modular that was very, very close, or could be very, very close to the modules that I am developing. Um, so. It runs in Voltage Modular, it runs uh, in a similar way to the other products that I've developed, but you don't need to run it with any other modules, you can run it completely standalone. Um, so what we've got here is MIDI in, MIDI out. Simply connect it to whatever MIDI devices you have connected up to your computer. I'm going to connect it up to my, my Nordwave keyboard, and nothing more than that. And then when I type away, type away, play the keyboard, you'll see there that I'm logging the MIDI messages that I'm receiving from my Nordwave 2 keyboard. If I hold down, you can see, look at all those channel pressure messages that I'm generating, uh, mono, monophonic art to touch, otherwise known as. So it's a great way for me to see what's going on. Um, and that was great for a while, but I actually wanted to sort of see what was going on in other ways. So that's what this little sort of panel over on the right hand side here. It's, it's, a, it's like an oscilloscope display basically. If I uh, switch on velocity for example and just play away, you'll see there that it's now graphically showing me the, the different velocities as I play different keys. And it rolls along like that as you can see like an oscilloscope would basically. So I can view graphically the velocity, um, I can view graphically channel pressure. So as I hold down a note, you'll see there, I can see exactly what's going on in terms of the modified aftertouch that I'm generating with my keyboard. Um, and then once I got that working, and that was really useful to me, I decided, okay, well, how about polyphonic aftertouch, poly pressure? Now, obviously, my keyboard here does not generate polyphonic aftertouch, which is why I produced PPG, a piece of software that can produce and generate polyphonic pressure messages. So we won't see any blue lines on my graphical screen. But by adding that to this little monitor, uh, it really helped me to understand what was going on with my PPG product. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, my PPG product. Let's dra drag it in here. And instead of uh, my MIDI message monitor connecting to my keyboard, I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to connect PPG up to my keyboard instead. And then I'm just going to drag a cable out and into my monitor so that I can monitor what's going on. Let me just reset that screen. But as I play on the keys, you'll see that it's monitoring just the same. Yet the MIDI messages are going into PPG first. Now, if I want to generate some uh, polyphonic aftertouch, uh, let's do it from monophonic aftertouch messages, and uh, let's turn this velocity threshold right down so that it works all the time. So now when I hold down the key and press, I'm getting a blue line now, not an orange line, because this is now poly pressure, 
and you'll see here it's a poly pressure message that's being received not monophonic after touch anymore it's polyphonic after touch um, and this was really really helpful to me I could see for example if I'm going to use this envelope instead uh, let's switch to the envelope I'm going to hold down the key there you go you can see my little envelope with its slow attack and its slow release let's do another one um, and I can obviously change these and you can see let's loop it see all the polyphonic pressure messages that I'm generating and what it looks like graphically really really helpful for me to be able to see what PPG is doing um, but actually it's really helpful to see what any keyboard or sequencer or anything else that you might be using is doing um, so that is uh, my MIDI message monitor um, one thing that it's nice to see actually with it is if I switch back to monophonic aftertouch and I play around with these lags so now when I hold down and wriggle some mono aftertouch on my keyboard you're seeing the polyphonic aftertouch that's generated and it's reacting very very quickly as I wiggle the key but if I turn up these lags let's whack them up to maximum and I do the same thing now you can see the effect of that lag you can see how it's creating those very very smooth slopes as opposed to turning them down now you can see it's kind of it's a lot more haphazard and difficult to control so that was another nice thing to be able to monitor and see exactly how I'm smoothing out those those curves um, with these two lags here so that's MIDI message monitor now it's showing one blue line for polyphonic aftertouch and of course polyphonic aftertouch is polyphonic so I could have more than one note going on at the same time giving me polyphonic aftertouch if I were to um, apply a envelope an envelope sorry not a envelope um, instead so we get that going on but then I hold down two keys you'll see that I get a kind of fuzzy line because it's trying to draw multiple lines all at the same time it's it's an interesting effect uh, but it's a bit of a mess and what I realized is that I wanted to be able to see polyphonic aftertouch messages more clearly than this in a graphical way now obviously I could generate lots of lines one for every possible note you might want to hold down on the keyboard but what I decided to do was actually write another tool and that's what I'll show you now so let's go to that tool it's called the Poly Aftertouch Monitor, or PAM for short. <laughs> this is PAM. So PAM is a classic keyboard display. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output from PPG and I'm going to pass it into PAM. And we can take the output from PAM and pass it into the monitor still. But that's the wonderful thing about Voltage Modular, is that we can just kind of just move these cables around, move these modules around, um, and daisy chain things however we want to. So, keyboard coming into PPG, the output from PPG is going into my polyphonic aftertouch monitor, and then I'm taking the same signal and passing it into uh, my regular MIDI message monitor as well. So, now let's see what happens with these polyphonic aftertouch messages. Well, first of all, if I just play the keyboard, you'll see there that. You get instant response of what keys are being played. You can shift the octave range up and down. You've got a four octave range but that you're seeing here at any point in time, but you can use this octave control to shift up and down. And you'll see there that the colors are changing. It's going from red through to bright white and back down to red again. And that is showing me the polyphonic aftertouch. I'm gonna turn polyphonic aftertouch off. So I'm just playing the keys. And as you see, they're lit up bright red. When I actually have polyphonic aftertouch working, the strength of the polyphonic aftertouch, as you can see here, is denoted by the color change. So red means none, and bright white means maximum. 
And so you can see that it's pulsing in between those colors because I've got my envelope here looped and it's constantly generating poly pressure messages for that particular key. And if I were to hold down a whole load of keys, you'll see them all pulsating at their own speeds in their own time. They've, they've all got their own individual cycles going on. Like that. Let's switch back to mono after touch mode rather than this triangle uh, that's being generated by the envelope all the time. Um, let's whack up some lags a little bit. Let's put it on to last note. So I play a load of notes and as I press down, you'll see there that it's that last note is the one that's receiving the poly after touch. If I switch it to first note, Press down, there you go, it's the first note that's receiving the polyphonic after touch. So this utility has been really, really helpful to me to figure out uh, how my software is working and what it's achieving. Um, and I think not just from a development point of view, but just actually from a using point of view, if you want sort of visual immediate feedback as to uh, which particular note it is that's got the polyphonic after touch active, or how many notes you've triggered by your settings here, then you can see it there. So for me, when I'm using PPG, uh, this polyphonic aftertouch monitor tends to be a sort of like a permanent thing on my screen. And because this is voltage modular, I can just add it in here, no problem at all. Move it wherever I like, it's that, that simple. So that's it, those are these two uh, little tools, little utilities relating to MIDI messages. Uh, the MIDI message monitor and the poly aftertouch monitor. They're both going to be available to you by the time you see this video as a little bundle uh, for you to download and buy and run inside Voltage Modular. And if you are an owner of PPG, uh, then I will provide you with a discount uh, to make it even easier for you to, uh, to, to purchase these particular tools. That's it. Until the next one, thank you very, very much for watching.